guys, it's Matt here, it's Oathwire, it's episode 52, and I have a special guest here. He's been on before, and it's Lucas. How are you, Lucas? Hello, I'm fine. Thank you very much. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, yes, I'm, I'm good. Back in the hobby groove after my slight uh, wibble and wobble with COVID. But so uh, get back into that. So uh, gaming again and painting again. Doing, got some boats, gonna do, doing that sort of stuff, uh, finishing off some elf cavalry. And then I've got to stare at vast sums of other things that need painting. So uh, uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm good, my friend. Uh, so um, yeah, what's brilliant, it's brilliant uh, to have you back on. Really appreciate you reaching out again. Um, yeah, we had a good episode last time, so I'm sure we will have a good episode. Pleasure so, to be back. <laughs> yeah, no, it's brilliant. Thank you. So what's new for you, uh, Lucas? There's not a lot out there coming in from our friends at North Star, but um, there's lots of other stuff going on. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's the beauty of both, Mark. Even if there's no official stuff currently in the works, there's a lot of third party things you can go and dig out to. Uh, I myself am waiting for a delivery of my first uh, unit of monsters. Finally, I managed to splash out on some ogres from Titan Forge to match the uh, aesthetic of the army. Uh, oh. That's one of the problems. Once you figure out like a theme or a style, then trying to match up all the unit options to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're gonna get, yeah, I mean, you're like, if, if listeners remember your your armies, the the, the conquistador type. Yeah, the steam Spanish, Yeah, looking sort of guys. So finding ogres that fit that um that theme, as you said, <laughs> probably a bit tricky. I mean, played played around with an option of using something like almost like steam powered armor from like War Machine and stuff like that. That was a All right, yeah alternative thing. But I don't know. I think the ogres swing it back into the sort of fantasy style that Oath marks. Like it does have very much that sort of sense of identity to it. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. All right. So you're hoping to get them soon, get them painted. Have you had any games of Oath Mark? I mean, yeah, mostly against uh, undead and uh, other humans. Um, okay. run the, the the beautiful Black Order you'll see on you know the Discord or yes. the Facebook groups. Yes, yeah, that's, that's part what, of the local scene. So, yeah. well, that's Augustus, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's got a bit of a keen eye on keen eye on, on the painting, isn't he? So, yeah, mm, yeah. very good weathering techniques. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, every. I think what was he was he doing? He was, went on to something. He no. started doing something else. Style oh, ten mil stuff. Yes, he's currently well. He's doing ten mil stuff for campaign play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. I was like, and I just started doing mine, and I'm like, yeah, this looks really good. And it, he popped it up, and I was like, oh right, yeah, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, <laughs> your stuff oh. looks at like twenty eight five mil, twenty eight mil stuff at ten mil. That's just not fair. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Uh, I mean, my, I'm doing my. I got orc army from the cobblestone thing for my ten mil. So it's like urukai is black, silver, <laughs> browns to pick out the boots and various other bits, and the shields are sort of a leatherette sign thing. Then I shade it, uh -huh. a bit of agrax shade to, to pull it all together mm -hmm. and then pick out a bit of detail. I mean, if you look oh. at it close, they're, they're bloody awful, but. Um, <laughs> But yeah. you don't look at them close, yeah. Yeah, but you don't, yeah, but yeah, on the table they look really nice because they've all got the I've all done yep. the white hand sort of thing going on and like that. So they, no, I mean they don't look awful, but they, <laughs> compared to Augusta stuff, you're like, all right, why do I bother? But, <laughs> no, it's always good to inspire. Not everybody can be an amazing painter like that. So uh, mm. uh, be happy. You know, I'm happy with what I've done actually because yeah, it that's always out, good. <laughs> I guess out on the table whenever I buy it. If I'm playing Oathmark, which is what I kind of want to do, but we're also looking at playing Kings of War, Fantasy oh, yes. Battles, we're going to look at playing War Master. So it's just, we kind of try to cover uh, as many mm -hmm. rule sets uh, with uh, one army as that we can. Yeah. You know, get, get a bit of use out of it. So, um, mm. and then also use the stuff from the army in like skirmish games. Yeah, 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 that's not bad. Idea. Uh, I mean, that's what Augustus is doing. Like, he's currently running his Black Order stuff in Saga, I believe. And he's having a lot of fun with that. <laughs> All right, cool. 
Yeah. So he's um yeah. So that's what that's my that's my new. So <laughs> um so we are going to uh going to be moving on and we're going to be doing uh beasts. Mm -hmm. So uh what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the monsters that are in the book. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to talk about the definitely to be talking about the monster in the room or the elephant <laughs> in the room. Uh, we are going to go over sort of uh, what we think of the beast, how it uh, plays, mm -hmm. whether we, uh, um, you know, tactics against it, possible thoughts on that, that sort of mm -hmm. thing. And then we're going to cover um, models for it, you know. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of these um, animals and the monsters and stuff uh, mm -hmm. are just not available out there uh, from North Star's official figures yet. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but um, yeah, so we just thought we'd give you some sort of like what, what we like and uh, what we don't like, I suppose, or what's yep. good as a good filler. So yeah, we're going to start off with gargoyles. So mm -hmm. uh, have you? had the occasion to actually uh, look at the gargoyles or um, you know, play against them or anything like that? I, I've looked at them, but never played against them. I imagine they pretty much fill in almost like a cavalry slot in an army for the sort of mobile harassment force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, the, the flying is, you know, they've got flying, mm -hmm. um, which is the kind of usefulness of them. The defense 10, but... Uh, um, from that point of view, activations five. So I mean, they're sort of flying mm. humans, really. Um, <laughs> basically, very fitting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I've we've used them on several occasions in some of the scenarios where they uh, they yeah. appear. Um, but I've never used them as a unit because it's mm. one of those things. Where do I put an ancient ruins into my into my kingdom to use? Yeah. Gardens? Um. Yeah, yeah, like, I mean, like, there's, there's honestly better units to fill that role. There if is. You're, like, if you've got, like, a dedicated kingdom, so. Yeah, I mean, if you could, if you're playing some sort of campaign -y thing and you can pick something up mm. uh, but above and beyond your initial army, that's not a bad idea. Um, they're, like, I mean, they're cool in their own oh, yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a gargoyle, it's a nice little flying imp demon or an equivalent. Absolutely. But they're just so fragile, like, a single yeah. solid ranged attack will like, oh, yeah. start causing trouble yeah you've got an elf to death star going on then they're, they're mm -hmm. not they're not gonna they're not gonna hold up to that so um, i mean the fly, flying's useful i did think about using the flying the, the, mm -hmm. the sort of ability to try and get them out onto a flank and then jump behind if i'm playing a lot of undead try and pick mm. a bit of necromancy hunting Maybe maybe they work better as a five or a ten man unit and go hunt down wizards. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm kind of mm -hmm. that's in my head is what they, I would use them for. Because if you can get you know if you can sort of sneak them down a flank right down mm -hmm. the, so, the sides, you can fly them over units. You know you don't mm -hmm. have to get into contact. Try and get as close as you can. Get them bob them over the top. You know get yep. maybe get, get into an edge of a wood and so you mm -hmm. can't get charged by anything. Ugly like cavalry or something. Well, you know, yeah. it's a bit harder, and then jump over the top and you know get around the back. It's if mm. nothing else, even it's going to make your opponent think. Well, do I turn a unit around to now deal with the unit that's in my rear? Um, so, but again, like you said, I think they're quite fragile. So it's and a bit pricey. So yeah, yeah twenty-four points. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a lot. It is. Um, I mean, you're basically, if you look at this, you know, if you look, we're gonna looking at those stats, mm -hmm. you are paying a lot of points for a flying human. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you got a hand weapon and it's flying. Um, and literally, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that is it. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I think they've got. I've, I think they've got a place. It's just I haven't found it yet, and I've just, you know, I've not decided to use them. Mm. Probably. Maybe, Probably like wizards, artillery, harassment. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, I didn't think of that. Trying to drop him into a into a, mm. a um a ballista as well as a wizard would. Yeah, be. yeah, yeah. But they would 
they, they I think they require like a magical buff to be worth it. Yes. At 23 points, you want them to have a bit more defensive or offensive oomph. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I mean, though, it hasn't got monster, so you could, um, mm-hmm. you could, I suppose that means you can have a champion. Well, yes, but well, then the champion, champion, yeah. champion, champion doesn't have fly, so they would lose that. Yeah. Unless there's a magic item which grants fly. <laughs> yeah, no, there isn't, is there? So, yeah, no, that's, that doesn't work either. So, yeah, no, you're right. There's no way of arming them up, really, because you can't have that magic luck <laughs> on them. Also, maybe if you got, like, if you got the spare points, sure, have a couple. You never know. You know, you could always threaten yes. some isolated things with that. But apart from that, I wouldn't build a strategy around them or honestly rely on them. No, no, no. It's a, one of those... Uh, Nice to have if you're playing sort of like three and a half thousand points and you want something that's a little bit. Mm. I mean, you could run them in behind if you run them in behind a unit to protect them, and then they sort of launch over the top of that and behind in. That's another would be another risk. Yeah, but your own units can travel through your units anyway, so you might as well just have a cavalry unit behind them. Yeah, 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 that's true. You know, the front unit just absorbs all the range of attacks, and then you have a nice big chunk of heavy cavalry yes. death starts rampage. It goes smoosh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I suppose the other problem we've got there is figures. I mean, there's the gargoyle figures out by Mantic, mm-hmm. uh, which aren't too bad, actually, for Mantic. Um, oh, yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah, I, I, did, I did look at them myself. They look quite nice. Uh, I believe Avatars of War have, like, a harpy unit, which also works. All right, okay. Um, of course, there's Chaos Furies from Games Workshop. I was going to uh, say. But that's yeah. horrifically expensive because it's like £25 and you get six in a box. It's, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> any sort of like melee, you know, melee-ish flying jump unit would work though, so. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, suppose something like Giant Bats. Yeah, oh, that's a good idea. And they got those um, the demon things from Frostwreck yes. as well, haven't they? Yes, you can buy wings for. So that would be a, that would be another um, a little bit of conversion stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got you know dual purpose again there. So mm. yeah, I mean that. I don't, yeah, and there's another company that does sort of like um, metal demons and stuff like that. I can't remember what the oh, I've forgotten who it's called now. I, I did, not, a, not a 25 by 20, not 20, you know, 20, 20 mil base. Yeah. Because yeah, Mears Miniatures does like really big stuff. All oh, right. No, this, these guys are, they do like sucky buses and stuff like that. Okay. Which would work really well. It's lots of basically um, demons with um, lady demons with their boobs and stuff out. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's, it's a thing. It's a, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I bought I bought one for um, Frostgrave mm-hmm. and I painted it and I was like, eh. <laughs> Do I, I don't think I want to play with ladies' boobies. Well, I, no, I, I, we don't. Anyway, we'll anyway. leave that there. Anyway, so yeah, um, yeah. So I'm not sure that there's many other out there. So um, I mean, honestly, just slap wings on anything vaguely yeah, fantastical, right. painted like stone. You're good. Yeah. I don't, I don't, is there anything out there in the 3D printer land? I don't know. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure, sure there is. Quite a lot. Um, Nothing jumps out. But saying that, though, um, I don't know. Forest Dragon does all that 10 mil stuff. Uh, oh, and then yeah. just all the death spoiler stuff. There's lots of stuff with wings there. Mm-hmm. I wonder if you scaled them up, what that would look like. That could be interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, it would be very heavy. It wouldn't be very heavy in detail, but like, so um, I suppose you could do also go on to um, Reaper probably has a lot yeah, of yeah Reaper stuff. I was gonna say Reaper bones they always have. Don't know if you would get like a f- you'd manage to get a full unit of twenty out of it. I think you, you know looking around you'd maybe get five. Yeah, yeah. I actually I no actually I did look at Reaper, and they do like the sort of stone uh type you know your church gargoyle type thing yes so i know they do a pack of four or five Mm -hmm. i think i think it works out if you did that and you're trying to make a unit of 20 it it works out to be about 30 30 odd quid 
Um, yeah. So it's a little bit on the steep side for 20 figures. Mm. Uh, and they were Reaper Bones as well. So I mean, that's not bad. Reaper no. Bones tends to be very affordable. Yeah, yeah, they are. Uh, I, I just sometimes qualities hit and miss. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, that's pretty good. And then so the next one we're going to look at is the Bodak. Uh, I mean, I don't know what about you, but until I read uh, mm -hmm. Oak Park, I'd never heard of a Bodak. I mean, the name has been used for a D and D monster, but it's a very different thing. So, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm, I'm aware of the name, but not the actual folklore stuff behind it. No, no, it's, uh, it's and which leads me actually before we go on to those, leads me on to. Um, my first figure, I went and bought um, the Nazgûl's uh, Wiz Kids thingy, D and D Bodak. You get two in a yes. packet yes. for some ridiculous price, like three pound eighty or something. Yes, yes. The the Wiz Kids stuff for D and D is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. characters. But, they, <laughs> but um, and they fit on the twenty twenty five by twenty five. Yep. Um. And they look like an old man and, mm -hmm. and that. So actually, I mean, I've, yeah, that's why I went and got. And I think they look, they got a really creepy ass sort of like mask face. Yes. Yeah. And they look really good. So um, mm -hmm. that was the first figure that I, I just found it. I didn't know that was a thing in D&D. &D, and I played D&D &D for mm -hmm. ages. So, well, AD&D, &D, should I say. Oh, but, geez. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm that old. You know? Yeah. But, um, <laughs> So we, we would go back and um, I have used one. Um, mm -hmm. I did use him. Because um, basically what you're getting is a le level four spellcaster, um, which actually is pretty damn, you know, it's 400 points. But mm. you're also getting a spellcaster that discorporates uh, as a three health and two combat dice. Um, so it's a little bit tech and it's got monster. So uh, I mean, why do you want the combat dice? It's a level four spell cast, but that shouldn't be getting in combat, right? It, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. But um, uh, there are occasions where I've seen it happen. So mm -hmm. especially if you think about maybe that gargoyles are dropping down on you. <laughs> maybe. <yeah. laughs> but um, I've used a, a mage before to um, charge um, units to um, trigger them so they can't charge into the rear of my own units and stuff like that. Oh, so, OK. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and it worked. <laughs> and my 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 playing opponent was like, uh, and then I turned around and sl slaughtered the rest of it. <laughs> it's uh, Wolf Riders, it was, actually. Oh, so, wow, yeah, no, yeah. clever. <laughs> he, was, he was, like, not very happy. But, um, yeah, it's, it's very expensive. Uh, 400 points is quite expensive. Uh, all the monsters are. Yeah. Really staggeringly pricey. Yes. Like, oh. yeah. I know. I agree. Absolutely. Um, I I just yeah for for a level four spellcaster that's basically got discorporate and a bit of shielding. Mm -hmm. I, I I and what I yeah I didn't think it was worth it. Mm -hmm. um, and doesn't get like magic items. No. Doesn't. Also, you know, 400 points for a model on a 25 by 25 mil base. That's like not even a centerpiece. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no. Um, I mean, it's, it's he's casting it. All right, he's casting spells. Um, you know, and he can use any spell from any of the spell list, which I suppose is where the reason why they put it in there. But he's only casting yes. spell a turn. So... But if I you're playing a six or eight turn mm -hmm. game, you're, you know, okay, you're going to get six to eight spells probably cast, but. But but he is a generic thing and you can pick any spell list and yeah, you can make some you mad could, combos. Yeah, you definitely could do that. Um, so, yeah, I have, yeah, I mean, I used him, I don't know if I used him very well. Uh, it was just like. <laughs> And you play. We were playing two thousand points at the time, so you know you're paying fifth of your fifth of your army on one figure mm -hmm. uh, on a twenty five, like you said, twenty five by twenty five. Mm -hmm. And he's flinging some spells around. Mm -hmm. Is that what I want to be doing? Because 
I'm getting outnumbered really quickly. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, yeah, because, you know, that's what's going to happen. But yeah, so, I mean, like we said, go to the models. Um, those we got those WizKid ones, which I think mm -hmm. are perfect. But um, is there anything else out there that you can think of that would be? I mean, it's just meant to be like just a super wizard thing. So honestly, it feels uh -huh. like a sort of chance for you to throw in anything that doesn't fit your regular army. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, yes. I mean, you could, you know, uh, you could be going in there and sort of getting like a. I suppose 25.5, you probably get a, a, a 32 mil figure on there. Um, mm -hmm. So you're a really big wizard. Um, Something dr like a druid thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be nice. I suppose there's some bits and pieces. Oh, I don't know what they're called from the um, Age of Sigma. They got the fey looking. Sylvaneth. Yes, that's the alert chaps. Uh, yeah. Sylvaneth or anything from uh, Privateer Press's Hordes. Uh, they have Circle Orb Ross, which is all like druids and more sort of like bestial magic. Um, old Warhammer Wood Elves. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, that would be nice. Yeah, because yeah, they got that, uh, really got that mm. fey sort of magical aesthetic. That's, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's. I like that. Yeah, that would be that's going to be a, a winner there. Actually, I definitely go. I do like the old hammer stuff. So <laughs> um, even though I don't play, um, honestly, you could probably get away with Lord of the Rings ring wraiths. Yes, actually, yeah. Now I uh, that would be really good. I've actually got um, my three D print. I've sort of on a print all the <laughs> mini. No, printing goes on. Printing, printing goes, goes on. ever on. Yes. Yeah, ever on. Yes, and they're doing well. You know, it's not. It, it certainly is Lord of the Rings, but obviously not official. Yes. Um, <laughs> they they all very, but and the, he did all the ring wraiths or unarmored and mm. uh, a horse on, mounted and unmounted last month, mm -hmm. and there's some really cool figures on there actually. Um, yeah. It's gone down, they've done a real good aesthetic. They've done like sort of like a Far Eastern, mm -hmm. a few of the race of Far Eastern and, you know. Oh, the, the, the Khan. Yes, yes. So it's, um, yeah, they've got a good mix. So yep. Easterlings and Variags. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've got, they've gone through and sort of made the ring race from various different sort of places. So they sort of dipped into the different cultures from around mm -hmm. the world, different continents. So. Honestly, I mean, GW did that like 10 years ago. Oh, did they? I mean, like 10, 20 years ago, like after the movie licenses fell out, they started like looking to the books and they made each of the ring wraiths unique. So you had like, you know, the, um, uh, you had one from Harad, one from Umbar. You had uh, the ones from the books, which is Camel, the Easterling and the Witch King. Uh, but you had like the Black Knight, the Dwimmer, the Dwimmer Wraith. Yeah, like more okay. magey ones or more knight ones. <laughs> Well, there you go. I genuinely didn't know that. So mm. that were they any good? Because they sound quite good. The, the models were really good. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this was like before The Hobbit came out, obviously. So yeah. it was like because they started fleshing out the, the entire game line. Um, so you got a lot of really good miniatures for stuff from the books that wasn't in the movies. All um, right. Okay. Or like how they're now doing. Um, they're doing like a massive uh, Easterling release soon. With whole new units and like the Easterling Emperor. All right, cool. All right. Oh, there you go. I, I think that definitely would definitely work. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. So then we move to uh, yeah, everyone's favourite, the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> so we got two types of dragon. We got the wing dragon, uh, and then we've got the the flightless dragon. Really? Uh, well, mm -hmm. non winged dragon. So he is flightless in the game. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at 700 or 800 points for the beast. Um, and from honestly, because there was like an entire primer on monster use and Oathmark shared on the Discord. Dragons really fall under, you win the battle but lose the war. Yes. <laughs> like any one-on-one -on -one fight, they will pretty much dominate. But they are 
such a point sink for a game that's normally played at like 2,000, 3,000 points. No, absolutely. The amount of, like the, the sheer amount of this, the discrepancy in activations will sink you. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I've played against a dragon um, on a couple of occasions. And uh, it's like you said, uh, you pick a unit, feed it to the dragon, uh, try and make it sure it's not going to, you know, it's less not one of your best units because mm. um, it's going to die whatever you do uh, and hopefully mm. it holds out for a turn or two in combat mm -hmm. uh, and you go and try and do the scenario um, <laughs> which I won a game against a dragon by doing exactly that mm. it was the um, the mission where you have to get four uh, meeting engagement isn't it where you have to get four units into the into your opponents yes um, so we would, we did that and obviously he picked he had a flying dragon and mm -hmm. that doesn't count <laughs> so um i just made sure all his other units were picked off so yeah, yeah, yeah. i took him down to three units so he could never you know he, he could try and get there and split down but it was um it wasn't going to happen i fed him like i think i was feeding him my human line breakers which mm -hmm. lasted two turns maybe three yeah so, it is a beast. I mean, it's got the flame. It's got fire breath. Yeah. Um, but so, if you can, but as you said, like you fed it a unit. If you can take it out of action with a unit that's like half price, yes. you're yeah, done. <laughs> yeah. No. Absolutely. You know. I mean, the fire breath is quite. You know, it's handy. It, it does do the. You know, you get that for free basically. Mm. But you do anything. It's got. Activation is, you know, it is going to activate. Let's be honest. Uh, I was, was, was that ninety-five percent chance of activation? Yeah, I'm activation too. Yeah. I mean, it's not overly fast, but then you've got the fight eight. You know, yep. and then it's got you a charge. To fly. Yeah. So if you're charging, if it, dragon's charging, you know, it's taking straight up to ten. You know. <laughs> It's charging flanks and other stuff. You just don't want to start thinking about it, really, do you? Mm -hmm. um, you got wild charge. You got horrific. You got it's got shieldy, you know. Yeah. So it's just got like a mass of stuff. So it can just sit there, fire off its breath, do a little bit of damage, mm -hmm. jump on a unit. I mean, if you're fighting against orcs or goblins or something like that, yeah. I mean, the likelihood is you could break a unit in in, in one turn with the fire breath taking out a few. If you can get them to go disordered and then jump in with the the big attack, yeah, You're disappearing units in one turn. <laughs> so there's a lot of debate out there, isn't there, in the world of Discord, yeah. and Facebook about whether they should be allowed. And I mean, what's your feelings? I mean, they're perfectly fine. It's just they're sort of you know showpiece models. Mm -hmm. Keep them for like unless you're doing like a 5k game, keep them at home. Yeah. They are, they really don't belong in a sort of regular game, I feel. They're just way too expensive. Um, unless, like, both players have one, they sort of force specific builds, you know, army lists. Uh, but uh, anyone who plays Oathmark should have one or two in their collection because it's a catastrophic event. <laughs> yes, it is. And I have definitely got some. So, um, <laughs> yeah, always have a dragon. That's what I say. Um, because you never know, your opponent might decide to bring one one day and then, you know, you have to escalate your lists uh, and yeah, exactly. uh, next time you pick it up and uh, go for that two dragon list. <laughs> uh, that would just be crazy. Um, <laughs> but there's a lot of house rules out there. Um, also, you know, just they're a perfect centerpiece model for an army and they're just yeah. so... The stat line is so generic that it can be any sort of you know dragon big monster anything like for my army i'm considering getting a steam tank you know and kind of yeah. non-flying dragon done <laughs> yeah no definitely i mean it's you know got that movement six so i mean it's mm -hmm. not as fast as cavalry but you know it's going to get there pretty yeah. quickly and it's got wit i mean if it's if, if it's flying it's moving 12 mm -hmm. inches anyway so um there's, there's 100 points for, to, to basically add 
uh, through three inches to your move, but um, and the ability to ignore terrain. Yeah, yeah, and there is that. That's the important bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, there is that. So you know, you can fly over woods or something like that, and yes. just drop down and stuff. Again, yeah. So, I mean, I think I yeah. I've, like I said, I have got dragons. Uh, I would we, we banned it from we we've put the rule on that actually um, our friends my friends our friends Michael yeah. what aka the war Corgi and Chris came out which was twenty twenty percent yes limit on on against your army so you know that is you are playing a four or five thousand point army if you mm. can imply that and bring that on and I think that that kind of works having a dragon at that scale so. Like yeah. you said, yeah, more or less like a showcase game or like a yeah. big, you know, event. <laughs> Absolutely. So, dragons, <laughs> <laughs> models. Oh uh, well, yeah, as mentioned. Yes. Any, let's see. Anything from GW? Anything from Reaper? Anything yeah. from? Um, well, again, like, start thinking almost, like, outside of the box. Like I said, like, oh, it's not a flying dragon. A steam tank would fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah def- definitely, actually. Any, yeah. and, like, armored chariots or wagons. Uh, for flying ones, if you're building, like, I'm looking in the steampunk army, like, there's a Zeppelin you can get from Titanforge. <laughs> or uh, cool. one of those. Or the uh, Age of Sigmar, you know, the dwarven uh, flying uh, yeah, yeah, frigates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do stuff like that. Uh Honestly, with flying dragon, it's any sort of um, the phoenixes, giant birds, um, giant bats, wyverns, uh, drakes. Um, you could pr- actually, if you wanted, yeah. if you wanted one really cheap, uh, I'd say, you know, buy, buy the fifty by hundred mil base and yeah. get a monster hunter toy. They're like five yeah. pounds. All oh, right, really? And you, yeah, they're like five pounds. On you can or maybe tenner. But if you go like eBay or something and find them, there's like they've got a really good variety of like draconic beasts. <laughs> oh, okay, I didn't really... oh, okay, cool. I mean, uh, they're not I... quite that huge, but no. you know, they'll they'll fit. <laughs> All right, cool. Mm-hmm. I've got um my one's actually a uh, mantic one. I got the uh, yes, one with the elf rider is meant to be on its mm-hmm. neck. So, but it comes with two necks, and you have the one without. The saddle and the one with the saddle. Okay. So mm-hmm. I got the um, I got the figure out and the actually the prints that uh, comes with the. It's absolutely massive, <laughs> way at scale to anything Mantic does, yep. uh, mm-hmm. and well, quite a lot of other stuff actually that I have. So uh, I didn't. I decided <laughs> that's not going to happen. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's a nice model. Uh, I also you've got the. North Star just have, or I can't remember what they're called. They're getting a new line in. Okay. Um, so they've got a lot of, they've got uh, the, they've got the wingless dragon that's in the art. You can. Oh, you, nice. Yes, yeah. of course they do. Yeah. Yeah. And that is, I mean, that's, that's a quite nice looking dragon. Mm-hmm. And they've got these new big things. Um, <laughs> he's been advertising on the, on their newsletters and web pages and stuff. So. Um, they're not his, but he's bringing them in. Yeah. Um, and then I got actually, I just kit, did a Kickstarter for 3D models with print mm. minis, which are yeah. Atlantis miniatures, mm-hmm. uh, um, Patreon site where you can get get the STL. Oh, so nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I just did an early bird on that, and there's um, eight different dragons. So, um, oh wow, <laughs> yeah, and they all look stunning. Um, really do. I so. I got lucky, I managed to get my hands on the um Joan of Arc dragon. Oh, yeah, is, I've heard, uh, yeah, I've heard good things about that. It's a staggeringly huge beast. All right, um, isn't that meant it, to be 15 mil or something? Yeah, it's a 50 mil, but yeah, it works yeah. as it works as like a Drogon sized dragon for the Game of Thrones game, oh, right, which is wow. 32 mil. Yeah. Like, it needs a hundred by hundred base. Oh wow! At least it's like it. It is a staggeringly That's glorious. Cool. Yeah, it's a glorious centipede monster. <laughs> oh, all right, wow. All right, did you get that? Did you buy the? Because Jonah Art came out as a Kickstarter, didn't it? 
uh, they were selling it during uh, some expos. They were selling just oh, the model okay. without the rules or the cards because people knew the dragon was going to be popular. All right, yeah. yeah. So okay. I literally just, like, one of my friends was going to a show. I was like, here's the money, get it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's probably going to be like a centerpiece for like a different army, probably the Easterling one I'm building. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I am asking. I got actually. I've got the. Um, yeah. I, I was. I, I. I was looking um, at some of the old uh, GW dragons mm -hmm. as well. Oh uh, yeah, the old ones are very good. There's yeah. like the there's the old Lord of the Rings one, which is also pretty yes. decent. Cave, the cave drake. Yeah. Um, the fell beasts, you know, um, they work well. Uh, they have actually a small dragon as well. Don't get smog. <laughs> Not worth it. <laughs> Oh, really? I mean, he's like 400 pounds. What? All oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. Well, that, I'm sorry. The, I didn't realize that. That's outrageous. The, the, I mean, he is huge. Uh, hang on. I'm just going to quickly check that to not be like, you know, false advertising. Yeah. 380 pounds. Wow. wow. But like, he is ridiculous. Uh, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen, yeah. I've so seen he's, the sculpt. I've, he's I've two, seen the he weighs two and, a, two and a half kilos. And oh, wow. Is it just solid resin or something, then? Yeah, he's like eight inches tall. Uh, uh, okay. the, not, the base is nine inches long and five wide. Okay. Like, yeah, he's, a big, he's a big boy. <laughs> yeah, he's a staggering model. <laughs> wow. I mean, imagine painting that. Oh, wow. Mm. That takes so long. I mean, I'm, imp I'm I'm impressed he's not a Forge World thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was to say that. I was about to say is he Forge World. So, uh, but no. Wow. wow. Yeah. Uh, that would. Yeah, I think that would overpower overpower your table. But um, mm -hmm. yeah. And your bank card. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. One figure. Wow. I mean, four hundred quid could buy you a quite a big Oathmark army. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you use the like Oathmark deals. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah actually, because of what their brigade deals they do, four for five, yeah. for about yeah. 100, 100 and something quid, aren't they? So not yeah. a lot. So, yeah. 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 You, you'd have about three solid sized armies for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bonkers. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. So, um, yeah. I mean, there, I think, I think, you know, it's, there's, I mean, it depends what obviously what army you're doing. There's mm -hmm. so many out there. I mean, if you were doing like an Easterling army, like you said, mm -hmm. you go and find, try and find a sort of you know a Chinese dragon or a you know Japanese dragon. Yeah. That aesthetic of the Asian dragons that are out there, and but they're they're all there. It's just yeah, any kind of flavor you want yeah. is there. Yeah, I mean, but that's the beauty of both, Mark. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Don't have to as worry about that. Yeah. As I said, I'm gonna get my hands on a steam tank and a Zeppelin and that'll I, work. I am liking that. I, I, actually the other thing I was gonna say was the um the uh, again the WizKid ones. The um Yes. The young oh. they, do, they do the young ones which are quite yep. good. Yeah, you know, they they are good, and then you get the bigger dragons, they are <laughs> really nice. And actually the price break on those are really good. I think yeah. I picked up a blue uh, as a present a blue, the young blue dragon mm -hmm. uh which is more than adequate i would suggest for oath mark uh yes for 14 or 15 quid mm -hmm. you know it's a, it's not a massive beast but it wasn't tiny either um yeah so uh definitely worth a look at those guys and then they do like the middle blue dragons and mm -hmm. uh, legendary blue dragons and stuff and, they're, and again, they're not they're good price. I mean, you're not gonna you're gonna pick yeah. one of those up much but cheaper than you know uh, buying a full metal old hammer mm -hmm. one from yeah or 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 or, or, or new JW one uh, three hundred eighty for sure yeah but um what did Reaper do them Reaper's got a fair amount of dragons okay. yeah yeah I I, I I sort of flick into Reaper very very um infrequently so <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, lots out there, guys. Lots and lots. So, um, so then we all move to the Surma. So again, another beastie that I'd never heard of until uh, Oathmark came out. <laughs> um, 
that's that's the one with the stone gaze, isn't it? It is got. It's a, uh, it's just a basilisk, isn't it? With like a different name. Yeah, pretty much. To be honest, um, it's horrific. It's got brace. It's got shielding. Stone gauge. It's large. I mean, and it's so it's stone. Basically, it stares at a unit, scares it, it scares somebody to death, and then charges it. <laughs> I mean, it's got an activation four, movement six, fight six, defense twelve, combat dice four. Uh, it's a monster and it's got six health. So at 240 points, I think it's and on a 50 by 50 base. I think it's <laughs> a, quite an effective monster, actually. You, I know you've suggested that some of the monsters were horrifically priced. Um, mm. but, uh, for that sort, sort of cost, I think that's actually probably probably wouldn't mind paying that. And I've, I've again, okay. <laughs> I've got a Wizkid uh, beast that has eight legs so mine's the same has got eight legs and not yeah. six um i really can't remember what the model is now but it was a good price break that gave the aesthetic of the Surma with little mm-hmm. little sort of uh legs and the deep mm-hmm. dark cavern gave yeah it was, it was it's the size of a bull mine's bigger than a bull but um it, it looks good yeah i mean and any suitable gorgon miniature would also work i imagine yes yes definitely but um yeah it's i think for 240 points i generally think it's a it's a good mm-hmm. it's a good uh it's a good it's a good investment and um to to bob around um if you were looking to play a monster you know if you're looking mm-hmm. to play a monster uh, i think there's that's certainly these the unaligned uh creatures you need to want to really want to think about whether you need that in your kingdom but <laughs> yeah um if you can pick it up um in your fifth ring or something like that maybe mm. yeah it's it's worth it uh, or if you're playing a different sort of campaign system like mm. we do where you can pick up territories and basically um you randomly roll to see what's there so um yeah i i, I can't think of anybody else. I mean, there must be buckets of guys out there doing six-legged, <laughs> bull-sized monsters. So, um... I mean, again, uh, you could just use it, the bull size Again, it's a guide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just anything works. Go wild. Yeah, as no. long as it's as long as it's easily identifiable on a tabletop. You could use some sort of like um, with yours aesthetic some sort of like mini bath bathtub steampunk sort of tank scout tank or something like that you know the aesthetic a, i'm going for don't you i i, I understand where you're yes. going with yes. but wow okay <laughs> yeah, i think that would definitely you know you've got the uh it's got a sort of a ram on it or something and the stone yeah. is some sort of but basically steam- you mean you mean the robotic bull from yes. Mantic, the dwarves yeah. have Oh yes, that would be really cool actually. I completely Maybe. forgot. Mm. Yeah, I completely forgot about that. <laughs> uh, I think somebody did that. Maybe not. I don't know. Mm. I, I saw somebody on the face on mm. the old face tube and they uh, they painted some of those those um balls up. Yeah. <laughs> so um yeah. I I have to say I'm pretty impressed that um yeah with, <laughs> with the research there with of of what they what they've got going on where joe yeah. these from so um but yes so the next one we're going to move on to is the troll um so you we have a troll oathmark um we have official oathmark trolls um mm-hmm. they have been released this month i actually bought um the resin ones at 48 pound for three um, oh, wow okay yeah i know you know when you have those impulses that you want mm-hmm. to be, yeah 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 that's that's the impulses i had um they are about 12 i can't remember how much they are now mm. I was, nine quid maybe i think um well, you, you're spoiled for choice when it comes to trolls though There's, oh yeah yeah I've just, I've pretty thought, much I've, every miniature maker has something that would work yes <laughs> oh there's a there's a ton there is a yeah. ton um i haven't i haven't used trolls because i haven't um gone for the aesthetic or, or kami yet <laughs> um, 
it has got shielding it doesn't have regenerate we were talking about um hmm. because yeah that's weird that's super weird isn't it you know mm -hmm. what troll doesn't have regenerate it, it does that's not a thing that it has but it's got yeah. charge it's got wild charge it's got horrific and it's got water walk um now i know people who have talked about using the trolls to do things like uh for the water uh, for the river scenario yes so the they, bridge. So they, yeah so they can get across it i would argue putting in the river's uh <laughs> um terrain piece just in case you can need to go across a river mm -hmm. uh, to a wall of, of of whatever on the other side you're probably mm -hmm. wasting your money <laughs> if you want but water walk yeah I, you know i don't know if, can make a hilarious if you're doing a naval battle though ah oh, yes i didn't think of that that would be quite cool <laughs> yeah um you check out the privateer press because they have an entire faction just called troll bloods all right uh and they're about you know like their basic infantry is like ogre sized and you have these i'd say they, they look almost like age of sigmar orcs <laughs> okay but with but more like boulders and spines yeah, yeah, yeah all right okay so yeah i mean they're still i mean i mean if you got one of those boss orcs or whatever they're called it's yeah massive bloody things aren't they so yeah <laughs> yeah i mean they're, they're super cheap uh mm -hmm. they don't they i mean you the problem you've got is that activation six so mm. um death star probably can make them run away <laughs> yeah and the most you can ever get of them is like six yes so. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So, um, yeah, aesthetically pleasing and definitely would fit into the um, orc army. I mean, obviously, you've got the, I mean, I do like them. It's the um, GW trolls from Lord of the Rings. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the Age of Sigma Hearts. Oh, do they? All oh, right, yeah, I've not looked, seen the ones from Age of Sigma. So. Ooh, there's quite a variety. You've got like the stone That's trolls, the like river trolls, swamp trolls. And you oh, get right, three, okay. three of them in a set, so yeah, you know, it's kind of they're perfect for it. <laughs> well, I bought and um, actually, I'm saying that my tro my first troll I bought was from Atlantis Miniatures. Oh, nice! And he's beautiful rock troll. Mm -hmm. Um, so he's you know, it's you're putting the troll on a 50 by 50 base. Uh, mm. yeah, he wasn't fitting on that, and <laughs> he's absolutely massive. So he is actually, I use him as a giant because he's that big. So, um, he fits on the 50 by 100 perfectly. So, uh, that's my troll, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, again, guys, I mean, recommendation wise, I really like this. Actually, I really like the sculpts from North Star um i do like some of the gw trolls that are out there um certainly the old some of the older ones i'm not so keen on that sort of spindly ugliness that's going on I oh know. but the, i think their current swamp trolls are fantastic there's like uh, one halfway through like vomiting or something <laughs> all right okay well there you go i have not seen them i've not really looked so that'd be quite cool oh they're cool. called trogoths now or something Trogoths. Okay. <laughs> Is that some sort of IP thing again? Is it? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then we move on to the Nucker. Mm. Again, what the is a Nucker? Um, no clue. Yeah, never heard of it. Um, there's no model out there. Uh, it's basically says here is a giant limbless amphibious serpent. Uh, so. A, a snake. <laughs> yeah, it's just a sea serpent. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it goes up to fifty foot long. So there you go. It's um, it's an eating machine. Yeah, it's something. <laughs> yeah, I. It, it's um, you've got horrific. You've got poisonous breath, um, which is similar to um, fire. Uh, the fire breath. So mm. you can fire that out before you charge. It's, uh, it's almost like a discount dragon. It is. It is yeah, very much. Yeah. I mean, you've got that um, water walk again. Um, mm. I don't know what it is with the troll, uh, with the the goblins and the orcs. They, um, mm. Obviously, 
need to walk a lot on water. So yeah. <laughs> it's again, it's activation six again though, uh, but this time you get courage three. So you know you're down to three, starting a three on your morale um, if you get hit. Uh, so it's not running away super quickly. Movement six, fight six. <clears throat> Uh, defense is 13, which is pretty good, and co it's got five combat dice and eight health, um, but 500 points. Now I have used it. Um, yeah, <laughs> not something I would bother again with. Um, Aren't they one of the summonable ones? Like, uh, uh, the like the elves summon it or something like that? I don't know. I would have to go and look. Um, is that an elf spell, is it? Uh, maybe. Look, I'm, well, I'm, hang on. The no, no, is, isn't the, the knucker an elf, elf monster? Because it's a troll and it's an orc. And oh, it's an orc one. Yeah, maybe. Okay, sorry. So yeah, maybe yeah. an orc, monster, orc spell then. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. there, there is one or two spells where they just like, here's our monster. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I know the undead have got... Um, yes, the barrel worm. The barrel worm. So I don't know. Is it a every spell? time he plays Augustus, uh, every, plays undead, Augustus takes that spell and tries to save <laughs> <laughs> So dumb. We talked about it um, in our undead um, mm -hmm. talk with me and Michael, um, and we just did the spell covers. We covered the spells <laughs> uh, a few days ago. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's either really devastating, but it could turn up in your own forces, <laughs> we, which is you know yeah. not clever. problematic. <laughs> yeah, and. Um, or it just appears and does the square root of chuffle um, <laughs> and then disappears again, which I've seen happen on more than one occasion. So, which is hilarious because <laughs> they think, ha, ha, ha. but um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I suppose, again, it's one of those models. It's, you know, it's a lim limbless, lizard type thing which screams snake um yeah. <laughs> i bought a what did i buy i think i with kids giant python um yeah that would probably work which is really good actually it was a really good solid model mm -hmm. what i did was i went i was at um cotswold wildlife park and they've got okay. a the snakeatorium or whatever it's called the reptile room <laughs> and um there's this bright yellow um tree viper mm -hmm. uh, and that's now my knucker because i painted him bright uh -huh. yellow with uh yeah you know, uh trying to sort of emulate it and you know, it doesn't look obviously look like nature itself but it's not mm -hmm. too bad yeah so but there's, there's a bucket load of models out there with mm -hmm. with um snakes and giant snakes i mean you could I mean, if you think about it, you could probably do some conversions as well. So, you know, buy a... I mean, it's just anything with toxic breath again. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could probably buy some sort of plastic alligator. True. Uh, that's close to cut its legs off and... Uh, just a toy face. snake. <laughs> yeah, make it sort of look like a snake or a dinosaur or something like that. I don't know. There's probably a fair few STLs, although dinosaurs probably... Yeah, 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 definitely for sure. <laughs> so... Um, but what I'm not saying is, is get a, a um, you know, a, a rubbish model and stick it on a base <laughs> <laughs> and say that's done. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, next we move, I suppose, on to the um, elf beasties. So we've got the giant spider for starters. Mm. Um, is that the singular one or a unit? can't quite remember oh, it is singular but you can right. you, you can have you know you can have one but you, you you're allowed up to three in your unit mm -hmm. so uh the territory gives you the option to have up to six. Oh, uh, so they're the ogre equivalent basically yeah basically yeah yeah okay well because it helps yeah. you so, so they're meant to be on like the 50 by 50 bases they are on a 50 by 50 base um they are uh Actually, one of my friends, uh, one of my gaming buddies, it's, it's his favourite monster. Um, okay. That, yeah, uh, activation five, five, movement five, fight three, defence eleven, combat dice are three, and they got a health of three. So they, they are quite, uh, and they're forty points. I mean, it's an elven unit, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, forty-eight points. Sorry, I can't read. Um, mm -hmm. 
they are, but they're, they're quite a good unit, really, for what they are. Um, I'll admit, anything on the 50 by 50 base that's you can have in like a group of three, that's almost like a unit. I'd say those are probably the most useful monsters in an army. They're the least expensive. Yeah. Absolutely. So things like the ogres, the wolvers, the spiders, uh, trolls. Yeah. All of those. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I use. I mean, I use them regularly as uh, flank blockers. Mm. Uh, so when I put my train out, <clears throat> and I've got some forest or woods or whatever I, yeah i'll whack them at that out there these are nim they're nimble which is really good they got shielding and they're horrific so mm -hmm. you put it out there unfortunately my friend does the same thing so we usually have a, a spider <laughs> on um but if you're going against somebody that doesn't really do that very often you can mm -hmm. refuse the whole flank with them they're a good blocking force you know they'll, they'll probably get squished but yeah. they can they can hold up units especially if you put leave them in the woods yes um, because they've got, you know, the, the, your opponents either got to come in and come in and get them, mm -hmm. or just sort of hope that they don't come out and get you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they're, they're good. Um, uh, with good nimble, with I, I, nimble, I, I, they I, probably I, make very good flankers. Yeah, yeah. I use them. I use them a lot. I mean, the movement of five isn't great, but there's nothing stopping you casting something uh, on them. Uh, fleet feet maybe or something um uh if, if you've got access to that spell yeah absolutely yeah um, i don't think i don't think elves do as basic no, just no, to stop no. that yeah yeah so you, no. you you'd need the sort of you know the the neutral monster with the spell casting absolutely or an allied dwarf <laughs> yes yes so um but yeah that, that'd be quite that'd be quite useful for that yeah and i i I think it's a, a great little beast. I mean, there is, I mean, there's just a thousand and one spiders out there in the world of what model am I going to use, I suppose. I, I'd say I think the War Games Atlantic one would be the best value because you do get like 10 of them or something in a single box. Yeah, there's, you get you get some really big boys and girls yeah. and then you get like the smaller clan, sort of smaller guys as well mm. um yeah they think that they're definitely the most popular variant i i would say um mm -hmm. out there i actually the first spiders i bought were actually off of ebay they were plastic um uh halloween sort <laughs> of toy things uh which were really big cost me about three quid i dry brushed them i added some red stripes to the yeah. thorax and the and some of the legs and all that more sort of malarkey and paint mm -hmm. the eyes and the and the pincers and stuck them on a base and they cost you know like I said about two quid yeah. and I think I got about 30 20 or 30 of the bloody things so that's that's an excessive amount <laughs> it, it was it was just like I think they were they came from China so uh, it was like a, oh yeah here you go have all of these for nothing and I'm like yay I've been giving them away. <laughs> yeah, because like the, the most you can have is four. You can have four copies of single territory, so that would be six, twelve, twenty-four spiders maximum in an army. Yes. yes. If you went all in on them, absolutely. Geez. Yeah, but um, that that would be excessive, I feel. But um... <laughs> could probably uh, count them as a chariot. Yes. Mount a hero on them or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely. I mean, if you were going to drop, you could drop that into like a goblin army and mm. use your, use your, your gobliny type things, and you know, because that's very GW, isn't it? It's oh like, yeah, very. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I've. But though, to be honest, I've got some. I've got some various other. I got the North Star ones that they sell, which are quite small. Ooh. Okay. Uh, they are they're, they're metal cast. I think they're from the cobblestone range. I bought ah, those. Mm -hmm. I bought those initially for Range of the Shadow Deep, and they're nice little models. And you, if you put two on a fifty by fifty base, you've, you've got giant spiders. It's <laughs> that sort of swarmy, you know, sort of feel to it. Um, yeah. And then I've got uh, I have got some metal ones from a company, German company called uh, Table Top. Table Art EU, which are really nice. Uh, they're metal as well, but they're very okay. soft. 
they're well casted, but you can move the legs so you can get a lot of variation in them. Ah. Uh -huh. I painted up those a load of them for my friend. Uh, <coughs> and I did them all in lovely sort of yellows and greens and uh, blues and stuff. He said, "Oh, you want me to wacky colours?" And I thought they they came out really nice actually. <laughs> He paid me to do it and paid me for the model. Mm. I was like, I want to keep them now. They're nice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's there's lots out there. Um, I'm sure there's, yeah. Oh, you can print them up the wazoo. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And then we move on to the same, uh, the same wood, the same forest, should I say, the dark forest, mm -hmm. where we also find our wolvers now. What are wolfers? They're not. They're not werewolves. That's it's very clear. They are a wolf type man race type thing. Um, this is one of my favourite units. Um, I use wolfers mm -hmm. a lot. Um, I really do like them. Um, so why? What's their rules? What's the well? Nature? So we've got an activation of five. We've got a movement of seven. So automatically we got we got a ten and a half inch move. We got a fight of three, uh, and we got defense of ten. We got co three combat dice, three um, health. Point point cost is eighty, but we've got horrific. We've got charge two. We've got wild charge, <laughs> got nimble, and we've got regenerate. So all for the price of <laughs> eighty points. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's and they are good. Uh, I have to say they. He, the, I, I, I use yeah. them out flanks again, but I use them on out on the flanks not to hold something up this time. I'm using them up to go and rip up a unit mm. that hopefully that they've put out to hold a flank up, and then start te tearing it down the flanks. <laughs> and it works. It really does. You get six of those guys. You know, two units. Yeah. That's that's happening. They start making holes, um, and that regenerate is super useful because yeah, especially you know if you're getting initiative and you get to a point and you've just had a combat, you re you reinstall you know you use them first. Mm -hmm. They they all they get a point back and off we go again. So you're getting wounds back. Um, yeah, and I mean, you know, a nice chunky unit of those is about the same points cost as a dragon, but it's got way more special abilities. Absolutely, no, absolutely. With mean, that charge to, you know, you're on mm. fight five, you know, and like I said, I'm trying to hit, I'm hitting soft units and hopefully I'm hitting soft units and I'm also trying to hit you in the flank. So yeah, it could be hitting you on a six, you know, oops. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, horrific. Oops, again, obviously, if you're <laughs> undead, you know, because you're only rolling that one dice. Um, True. Uh, you know, and then you got wild charge. So if it don't all go right, you know, can't get that. I need that extra one to take out a whole line mm -hmm. of, of these guys. You know, there you go. You know, it's got so many, yeah, good things going for it. Um, it's, it is one of my favorite units for, mm -hmm. for sure. For sure. Uh, and I've got some. I painted up. I actually got some uh, War Games. Uh, I think this was print all the minis. Is it print all those? Yeah, War Games Atlantic uh, STLs and printed their um, werewolves off. Ah, uh, nice. I've, yeah, and I really like. There them. actually there isn't that many just straight up werewolf models that I can think of. Um, I suppose you could probably make do with Beastmen. Um, yes. Or a that, variation. Yeah. Um, that being said, um, it'd be very expensive, but a way to do it would be getting the Privateer Press uh, Circle or Bros Warp Wolves. Yeah. Uh, they would certainly fit the build. It might be a little bit big. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. there's, but, there's also, uh, when I went to Salute, there's mm -hmm. also a company called Oakbound Studios. I don't know if you've heard of them. <laughs> Uh, it's a little one man band, uh, does his own sculpting. Uh, he's got a little YouTube channel mm -hmm. and he actually makes a wolver. Oh, nice. And I bought three of them. Uh, <laughs> so they are sitting there. They are all the same pose. Uh, but if you mix them up into a different unit and they are slightly smaller than what I've got, but they are 
a specific beast and it is the wolver and that's what he's decided very he's nice taking it from the same folklore that joe find um uh yeah it's a really nice model actually it's sort of um i was and i was like i want to help the mm -hmm. i want to support the little guy and it, yeah i was like yeah i might have to have a fiddle around with it to see if i can i i suppose it. also any sort of fitting large wolf would also do yeah like dire wolf yeah no actually and uh the um uh one of my playing buddies uh that lives mm -hmm. in Vista um uh, Armand he has got what did he he's, he's got some they're, they're beautifully painted um they they look like stags actually um but he's kind of a oh wow yeah they've got like this fey look and they're really nice but he uses them a wolf as well and you have to have to look at them and you go okay yeah i can see that <laughs> <laughs> they don't look like stags they don't look like deers they don't look like they don't look like anything they sort of like yes yeah. a japanese oh what's that uh japanese oh kirin yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so it's, it's there's that kind of feel to it and i'm like yeah that works so, okay like like spirit spirit sort of uh yeah thing so there's lots of there's lots of there's lots and lots and lots but like you said there's not very many um <coughs> yeah you get the gw werewolves and yeah. there there aren't any gw werewolves but oh, used, used to do blood skin ball. wolves that's why this isn't there a blood uh, yes. ball? there's a there blood is, ball champion that just come out but that's, yes there's there's a special character yeah. there are regular ones so there is a couple of sculpts actual yeah. like unit werewolves were forge world yeah. only because they used to do skin wolves yes Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Well, I suppose, yeah, hmm? yeah, that's it. Yeah, and I was just thinking, you're right, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things that they never really went in on. <laughs> that, that, that's fair enough. I was, the aesthetic didn't please them for a change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yes. But yeah, no, uh, yeah, if you haven't used them, um, do, is my. my <laughs> Is my uh, my bit there? So then we move on to the lindworm, uh, lindworm or wyverns, or I've heard people pronounce it wyverns, but you're mm -hmm. wrong. It's wyverns. Um, <laughs> <laughs> stop calling it a wyvern. Um, I have a wyvern, <laughs> yes. but I don't actually. I have. Uh, it's it is my beast of choice for my army. Because I am elf, um, <laughs> it's a slightly less expensive dragon with slightly less abilities. Yeah, you've got an activation of three. You've got eight movement, fight of five, mm -hmm. defense of twelve, combat dice of five, eight health and five hundred points. But you get monster horrific shielding two, flying and enormous with that. Um, and it dies really well against catapults. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, from what I remember, artillery is kind of seen as imbalanced. Uh, rules as written. <laughs> yes, yes. I have lost him, my beast, a couple of times to very well placed uh, <laughs> attacks from catapults. But I've also ripped in. It's an, uh, what I like about it, and. It, mm -hmm is i like the fact that it's a big beast and people get distracted by those things yes uh, and then they go oh what am i gonna do i'll put all my army over there and i go that's exactly what i wanted you to do uh it's it's you know if you're playing in a 2000 point <laughs> army with a 2000 it's a big sink it's a big sink. yeah again it's it, it it's the dragon yeah it's the dragon just a little bit less so and affordable <laughs> yes um, but it still has all the drawbacks of the dragon to me. It absolutely. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Without yeah. a ranged attack, though. Yeah, it hasn't got the yeah, you haven't got the breath. So it has, you know, it's forty-five. Five, so that's not necessarily getting bigger. It's not like you get a charge or anything like mm. that. It. So yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's a, it's another. If I'm playing three thousand points, I have one in there because actually, you know what, it's a it's a good laugh. Yeah. And it's, again, anything that would work as a dragon would work as a wyvern, huh? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I have got 
Oh, but at saying that, I use actually got uh, War Games Atlantic uh, Manticore, um, Ooh. and I use him as my waven. So um, uh, yeah, I um, it's a beautiful model. <laughs> it can't, I can't remember. It was an expensive model, but it was a beautiful model. <laughs> um, and I had him sitting around doing nothing because uh, I was going. I just had a fancy for it. And then it came up with a, there you go. I now have know what I'm going to use my linworm. But yeah, any of the, I think there's quite a few GW old sculpts, isn't there, that uh, work for. for I mean, the, again, like anything that's a dragon would work yeah. for yeah. the worm and it's, the women. It's just, yeah. there, there's, such a, there's such an overlap, actually. It feels kind of weird. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't, I don't I don't know why it's. I have to say, I don't understand why it's all. I mean, I know he's assigned it to mm -hmm. different races, but I don't see. I don't see the why it's a an elven beast. Maybe I need to look at the mythology a bit better. I don't know. Mm. Maybe maybe it's something to do with that because the lindworm's very uh, Nordic, isn't it? I think yes. Germanic as well, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I think that I think that will be, yeah, that that would lend itself very much to the elf sort of ah. theme as well, because they're yeah. very, they're I, I guess I'm from like a gameplay perspective, like it's just a lesser dragon. Why not just have that, and then it becomes a regular dragon by buying extra options like flight and so on. Like, it, why is it a separate entry? I guess. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah definitely. But yes, so then we move on to the giant, and who doesn't love a giant? <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh, a giant, activation seven, movement seven, fight six, defense 13, combat dice five, 12 hit points, 350 uh, points. It's got monster, it's got charge one, it's got wild <laughs> charge, it's horrific, and it's got carriage one. It's, it's, a cracking piece of fantasy let's be honest you can have a fantasy game without a giant i don't think well i don't know what you think um <clears throat> like you pointed out but i think they're they're very much an underutilized thing yeah the, like even in more sort of you know when you think of fantasy giants aren't like one of the first things that comes to mind i suppose because most people consider them relatively mundane compared to everything else like they're just huge people yeah, 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 I suppose, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like when, when you actually stop and apply to it, they're going to be really like when recently GW came out with a whole new subset of giants, the uh, Gargants. All right, yeah. Which were all just like fantastic. Is that the, the Age of Sigmar? Yeah, Age of Sigmar, like yeah, the yeah, really yeah. big, big, big giants. <laughs> yeah, they are nice sculpts. I have to, you, know, they, you can't kind of get away with that. They are mm. nice, nice models. Um, apart from that, I'd have to say Reaper for some giant models because they've got a lot of the you know D and D flavored frost yes. uh, fire giant stuff, which works well. Yeah, um, I feel like the regular giant from Games Workshop is a bit too spindly. Yes, uh, you got the Mantic one that I've seen on yes. the tables, which is um, absolutely huge. There's the one from uh, Conquest. Oh, is there? I don't know that. Okay. I believe that yes, they have like a, they have like a Norse uh, fjord faction or something. Uh, okay. They've got a giant, and his pauldron is actually like a ruined piece of like tower wall. All uh, right, cool. It looks really good. Uh, yeah, no, that's cool. I actually bought a, a limited edition mm. wizard giant. Uh, Ooh. The, uh, thunder, the thunder giant um, temple. Mm. Guard captain. Oh wow! <laughs> There's like fifteen hundreds and got released, and I picked up some ridiculous amount of money, which was about twenty something odd quid. And I'm like, mm. I was like, if there's only this is limited edition, why is this so cheap? I didn't argue. I just bought it. So. <laughs> and Ooh, then, mm -hmm. and then my other one is I again War Games Atlantic. You get a theme. Mm -hmm. I, I like their stuff. Um, it's their cave troll. Uh, oh I, yes, yeah. I think I um I want to get some more of their yeah. other trolls. They're fantastic. 
there is also the um, Asunga of Ice and Fire giants, but they yeah. fit on yes. 50, they they fit on fifty by fifties, so they would actually work better as ogres than giants, bizarrely yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah, because I suppose I suppose if we look at the aesthetic that we from the the books and the mm -hmm. well from the film uh, the, the series the series, yeah, they're not giant giants, are they? They're no. just big ass people. So. Um, I mean, they're still like ten feet tall. <laughs> Just... Yeah, oh, no, don't get me wrong; they're not small, but they're not, you know, they're not um, jack colossal. And... Yes, yeah, they're not jack and a beanstalks at sort of height. So, yeah, no, I, I I like my giant. If you can get it moving uh, and it gets going, um, mm. it gets into an attack. You're hitting on sevens and a thirteen defense. <laughs> He's making a mess. But uh, at the same time, it's going to get every single catapult pointed at its face. Yep, there is that as well. But it, that. You know, again, it's a distraction, isn't it? But yeah, true. It, it could be used for that. So, well, well, it's working on that. You need to go off and and do the necessaries over there. So then we go to a bogan. I've never heard of. It. I, yeah, same. What is it? <laughs> I have no idea. But it says here, it's a large, shaggy ogre-like being that tends to live near the sea. Uh, in caves, uh, so it's, that's why it lives in the CA caves. Um, mm -hmm. But it also um, is a spellcaster. Interesting. Uh, yes, and it may select from human, elf, or general spells lists. So, what are you getting for that? You get a, it's activation four, movement six, fight three, mm -hmm. which is which is odd for a, a for a magic user. Defense 11, combat dice 3, health 5, and it's 450 points. And it's a monster. It's shielding mm. 2. It's got charge 1. It's also got, it's also a spell caster 3. So you can have 3 spells for, for yeah, pretty mean beast, really. Yeah, but then you're sort of like, is it better off throwing it at the enemy or having it running around casting spells? Oh, yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, then the list you get there, there's no. I don't know. It's, what would you take with it? You know. Yeah. You know how do you? Use, I haven't used it. Uh, I've not seen anybody use it either. Actually, um, it's difficult for me to comment on it. I'm not coming yeah. <laughs> against it, and I've not fought with it. I, I, I think you'd have. We'd. I'd have to get it out on a, on a table and, and yes. see what it does. To be honest, um, I'll have to do that. I'll have to try and. Get next my next pickup game. Or something. <laughs> to, um, persuade yeah, to fight give it a world. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we've got you know uh, standard sort of human alliance sort of stuff, which is ogres. And we've got the mm. ogre and the ogre line breaker. Which you've got a five point difference there. Um, yeah, but double handed weapons. Yes, you got. Basically, every the specials are the same. Apart yeah. from shielding, because the ogres without the double handed weapons mm -hmm. shield. Um, it's literally just: do you want to go more pure offense yeah, or a little exactly. bit more of a staying smashy? Ooh. Yeah. So um, yeah, uh, again, I think you know he, he said it's the three, isn't it? It's the rule of three. Yeah. They are a really good unit to use. The, the activation seven's not so great, but you, if you can get a general behind them, and yeah, make sure though they're getting those three dice, they're going to activate a little bit more often. Um, that's the key to them. Um, they're quite nippy, which is good, mm -hmm. well. and yeah, they, and, and they look good. Who doesn't like you know ogres running around their table? <clears throat> no, and you are you are utterly spoiled for choice for miniatures. Ah, ah yes, I mean there is so many. I mean you. Yeah. You've got all of the GW ones. Um, yeah, I'll, and again, I'll, the Reaper, yeah. um, the Song of Ice and Fire giants work really well as more like Savage Ogres. Yeah, they got, we go back to Atlantic Miniatures. They've, yeah. got, they've got some fantastic ones on there. You've got STLs from them guys as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a couple of the uh, um, resin that they print, uh, uh, they, they cast um, yep. Ogres, yeah. and they are fantastic. They you are. can even you can even use like fifty four millimeter scale humans. Absolutely, there's so, yeah uh, yeah that's good. yeah I never thought about that but <laughs> plenty of and there's yeah and there's plenty of 
28 mil stuff out there that you can yes. scale up easy. Um, so yeah, there's there's just a plethora of stuff out there for you to use. Um, I think uh, didn't was it Trolls or was it War Games Atlantic are doing um, a box set? Was that Trolls or Ogres? I can't remember. Uh, I I think they're doing like Lord of the Rings style trolls, so you could uh, off as ogres with the right colours. All uh, right, yeah. But then oh, the other things you've got is the North Star ones for uh, Rangers of Shadow Deep. Oh, oh yes, those sculpts are beautiful. Mm -hmm. Actually, I really do like those. Um, that's a definite one. I would. I haven't bought those for. I just haven't bought them. But um, <laughs> not I, yet. But not yet. <laughs> They're very uh, yes. The other thing I've got is with my dwarf army, which is all snow based, mm -hmm. I'm actually using some polar bears as my ogres. <laughs> uh, because, you know, why not? <laughs> yeah. So, because that's the aesthetic I'm going for the winter army and that sort of stuff. And I thought, I've got these polar bears and I want them to be used. They're really big models. Yeah. So I'm using, they're going to be ogres. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> And that's that's what I've got. They've got they've got double handed claws, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, there's a lot. There's a few bits and pieces out there, but uh, um, I got those STLs from um, those people at Atlantis Miniatures again. <laughs> so, um, I'm not here to um, advertise them, but they do some <laughs> nice stuff. They just keep they're coming just, up, though. Huh? Yeah, it's just the. That's, that's the truth of it. They do some nice stuff. So, um, <laughs> and yeah, so, uh, and then we move on to the uh, dwarf list. So we got the Bargast or Barg Barghast? Barghast. Barghast. Barghast, yes. So I do speak English. Um, even an American probably could have uh, pronounced that. Mm. Um, did I say that out loud? Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So what we've got here is basically giant black dogs. Well, you know, um, okay. which is awesome. I have used them and they are semi ethereal, which is even better, which means they can discorporate, uh, which is seriously useful. Um, they are activation four. They are movement eight. So basically they are cavalry. They have a fight three. Defense of 11, uh, a f combat dice of four and a health of four, and they are 200 points. They are on a 50 by 50 base, so you can take three of them as well. Um, so you got monster, shielding one, wild charge one, discorporate, horrific and large. Um, yeah, they are not, they're a nice bit of kit. I discorporate in through um, terrain because that that sounds like you're going to be painting it up as getting like wolves and painting them up in ghost colors yeah i think you could do that they got the you've got like uh, the dire walls from ice and fire you bring up they would be ideal if mm. you were those i think they would fit quite well um but you need you know it says horse size uh war horse size so it's a quite a big uh, I mean, GW wargs from their Lord of the Rings range. Yes, they. I was going to say those would definitely fit the fit that. Um, and you wouldn't need to buy a ton of. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, definitely those. Um, like, I think a single box of those has like six, so that's like a well, fully yeah, buff, yeah, yeah. like sort of buffed up units. And yeah. How much is that? Twenty five quid, thirty quid. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It's not too bad. Uh, they and they are my sculpts, to be honest. So. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I I haven't seen any. I've got some biggish wolves and stuff from various <laughs> people, but I've not got anything um, war horse size. So I am still on the lookout for that and um, mm. to see what I got. So um, I might have a look at those GW ones. I don't very buy very often buy GW. I do like those Lord of the Rings figures that they do. Yeah, uh, and you can never know. You have a look on eBay, you might actually be able to pick up something cheap. Mm. I mean, the, the latest releases for G for uh, Lord of the Rings from Games Workshop is like I'm building another human army now. So, <laughs> all right, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, do they? Oh, actually, that makes me um, wonder. If, I think I might actually have an STL for that. For that from the those uh, the printing goes on, which is all ah, the yes, not 
<laughs> yeah, not Lord, uh, of, the Lord of the Rings stuff. <laughs> But uh, it clearly is. Uh, so, yeah, I need to have a look at that. I've, yeah, I've got a list of as long as the armor stuff I need to print so mm. that I can not paint it. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, so, yeah, we move on to the Ichi, uh, which is... What on earth is that? I have no idea. I, like I said to you earlier, uh, Ichi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a large, gangly humanoid creature that lives in small family groups. Uh, the largest Ichi grows to about 12 foot, uh, although most are 10 foot. So there you go. It's a large, gangly, furry thing. Uh, <laughs> OK, never the only the only thing that came to mind is like the ogre sized ghouls Games Workshop makes. Yes, like the crypt ghouls. Work. Yeah, that could work. Yeah, I don't know. I really mm. I. Uh, I've not used again. I've not used it, and I've uh, n not come up against it. You know, you got activation seven, movement five, you've got fight four, defense mm -hmm. twelve, combat dice is three, health of five. And it's one hundred twenty points, and for that you get a monster, and you get and regenerate. So there is something that's quite useful. I think you get courage too, so they're not so run away. <laughs> Um, you know, yeah, true, true. They're just difficult to get moving. They're horrific. Uh, they're large, but they also can water walk. Again, it's one of those units I mm. haven't used to say, is it going to be useful? You know, how much water, how much, yeah, how, how many times does anybody put a river out on a in Oathmark? Yeah. Unless like, the mission demands it. Yeah, I, I know that it's in there, and we kind of ignore that one because <laughs> it's so broken. But um, it is broken. <laughs> well, I think there's ways and means around it, but I think the defender most likely to wins most of the time. So, I mean, a full criticism of all these scenarios can be saved for another episode. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, it'd be interesting for people to listen to this and pop some comments under what are they using. I don't. I haven't seen much in the way of people popping stuff up in the in the Facebook page or or mm. uh, Discord either. Actually, doesn't seem to be a go-to monster. And yeah. then we've got the Indric. So finally, uh, from the book, is an Indric in the snow-capped mountains, and it is a woolly rhinoceros. <laughs> yep, I, I love it. I love the aesthetic of this. But it's activation six. It is movement six. It has fight two. Defense 12, four combat dice, five health, and it's 160 points. And we got monster, we got shielding one, we got charge mm -hmm. three. So we're taking our fight up to five if we're activating. We've also got brace, which is pretty cool. Oh. Uh, so if it's being charged, it, and then it's got courage one. So it's it's got that, and it's on the 50 50 base. Um, I think oh, it's, it's not 50 50 base, I thought it was a 50 by 100. Uh, the intric. I'm reading here it's 50 by 50, unless there has been an FAQ oh. that maybe I don't okay. know. But, um, and mine is based on a 50 by 50, so okay. I, I will have to check, see if there's an FAQ out there for it, but maybe not. I don't know. But yes, it's a, a good beast. Uh, yes. I like it. It fits in with the aesthetic of the dwarf really well. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I've got uh model wise i've used it it is it's really good it's charging mm -hmm. <laughs> you need I mean, of course it would be you need to be you need to be getting it to to do something you need it charging mm -hmm. uh, sitting back and waiting with it is not it's it, it's, it's something to be used aggressively the shielding's there for something the, the, the defense is there for something so mm -hmm. the carriage is there to keep it m moving and attacking so um that's my suggestion with that one is just get it moving and uh, and get it into into the combat mm -hmm. as soon as you can. And, you know, you can also just use mammoths. <laughs> you can because you could uh, you could you would the, the question is, would you be able to use the ones from ice and fire that drank those mammoths? I those don't know. Like, you, I don't know if they fit on a 50 by 50 base because they're oh, on like 50 okay. by 100s. 
you, could probably, you could probably rebase them all right. Um, yeah. I haven't tried it, obviously, and I don't own one, sadly. All right. Okay. Um, so there is that limitation. Yeah, I've. Um, but I've apart from the, that, any sort of like yeah toy. I, well, I've got the barbarian uh, from Frostgrave that came. Oh up, yes, on the very nice. What do I know? Which I think is quite cool. Um, it's like you've got a like extra rider on there. So mm -hmm. if you've got, that works, I've also got um, a banther from my Imperial Assault. Okay, yeah. Uh, which I you paint up really well, and that looks really cool. So I've done that. <laughs> I put yeah, a banther that's, with, a, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I basically put the banther. I've took the sand person off. The mm -hmm. tusk has been discarded. The hole has been filled, and mm -hmm. then I, I've painted that with a white theme, white fur sort of thing. Okay. Sort of like a I don't know yak maybe, but it's obviously got those <laughs> spores. And I thought, well, yeah. that kind of works as well actually. Um, but then there's, like you said, there's lots of toys out there. I think um, there's not many models out there for them. But there is a lot of toys out there that could definitely be used. I don't know if uh, there's anything else that you know that's around. Mm. Or off the top of my head, no, honestly. Um, you can also use it for like sort of any sort of regular charging beast, I suppose. Um, no, mm -hmm. the big iron bull from Mantic is too large, unfortunately. Yes, I have seen people using that though. Okay. I think maybe I'm wrong. I've mm -hmm. definitely seen somebody with bulls. Maybe that was they using it for something else, but. Yeah, but that's the yeah they they get pointed up copper and stuff like that. Yeah, that yeah. One, can, yeah, yeah, yes. I'm sure, I've seen that. But I think yeah, and there's but the the one I want, which is the big old grenadier. Have you seen that? The massive woolly rhino. Ooh, no. It's, but it's proper too big. Uh, it's got <laughs> it's got three like barbarians hanging off it. It's it's the size of a woolly mammoth. Woolly, imagine what your woolly mammoth could be, but it's a woolly rhino. It's a fantastic sculpt. Uh, mm -hmm. It's about 90 quid or something, solid, you know, big chunks of metal. But unfortunately, it's over in Italy. You can only get it from the guys over in Italy. Um, <laughs> and all the encompasses spending huge, vast money on getting it back into the UK. But um, one day it will be mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure Mears Miniatures also has something fitting. All right. They've got lots of good, big monsters. All right, okay, well, that's <laughs> worth, definitely worth a look. So yeah, that is the main book. I'm going to say uh, we were going to cover a little bit more uh, uh, here, but we are at a very long episode. So <laughs> guys, what we are going to say is we're going to cover some more in the future on this and we're going to talk tactics and the like. Um, please put in the comments if you want to, us to cover anything else. Um, we were we're not going to do the 10 questions. We're not going to do, do a silly question in way too we, long. <laughs> because we are nearly at two hours and uh, we, we need to do, uh, let you guys have a rest. But yeah, thank you, Lucas. I think this is the longest, official longest <laughs> episode of of, uh, of Oathwire. But uh, I've had fun doing it. Uh, it's really, really deep. I like this deep diving into stuff. Uh, mm. uh, and it's given some suggestions out there. So. Listeners, I really hope you uh, enjoy this. Uh, please place your complaints uh, with Lucas because uh, it's all about him talking too much. <laughs> sure, sure. Yes, that's, that's what it is. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Always yeah. a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good to have you back, my friend. Um, it's been a pleasure. Uh, and I will say good night, good evening, and good morning wherever you are. See you later. Bye bye.